Uh, I did field work in Isaac Suleiman back in the late 1990s for my uh, PhD, which eventually resulted in a book that uh, Eric referred to um, earlier. And my focus wasn't really on religion first and foremost. Uh, but it was hard to do field work in Afghanistan in the late 1990s without relating to religion. Uh, Herat was, uh, as most of the country, controlled by the Taliban. Uh, most of the Taliban representatives in the area were people who had at least rudimentary religious education. Many of them, or most of them, were coming up from the south, from the Pashtun areas, coming into unfamiliar terrain, uh, largely inhabited by people of other ethnic origin, uh, and if not inhabited by people of other ethnic origin, at least uh, inhabited by people with very different political inclinations than those pursued by uh, the Taliban. So this was really an area outside the Taliban's comfort zone. And that also meant, uh, in many ways, more repressive policies on the Taliban part than they had within their core areas in uh, the south. Um, working in the village, and this, this was a fairly large village, some, somewhere in the vicinity of 700 households, as far as we could gather. Uh, ten different mosque areas, mahallas. Uh, in other words, also ten imams or ten local mullahs. And uh, through my time there, I interviewed all of these mullahs and some of them more than once. Uh, and they all proved to be quite skeptical to the Taliban, even opposed to the Taliban. And in private, they were making that very clear. But what I found more interesting was that while being so skeptical to the Taliban, they were also very effectively collaborating with the Taliban. They were actually the eyes and ears of the Taliban in the local villages. They were reporting uh, regularly on population movements, and there was a lot of it, because a lot of people went to Iran or went to other parts of Afghanistan for work or other purposes. Uh, but they had very this detailed lists of who were in the village at any given time, uh, lists that were shared with the Taliban. They were certainly keeping an eye on uh, the opposition. One of the neighboring villages, which was a village mainly inhabited by the Shias, was the center of a planned uprising against the Taliban in the very period that I was there. So in fact, uh, on the 17th of May, uh, 1999, exactly 11 years ago, uh, yesterday, there was an uprising uh, in the making that was clamped down, by, clamped down upon by the Taliban in this uh, um, Shia-populated village, Jibrail, outside Herat, which has always been a powerhouse of Shia radicalism and activism in the area. But the Taliban picked up on it, on, uh, upped on it, up on it early enough to be able to clamp down on it. And the uh, lists generated by the local mullahs was also uh, uh, a solid foundation for, uh, for claiming tax. So the reason I'm saying this is I think it's interesting to look at what sort of local penetration it was that the Taliban was able to have. And it wasn't able to have that penetration because it built up such a strong formal state apparatus. It was able to have it because it really built on the religious networks. And even when local religious leaders were defiant, the Taliban were able to incorporate them into their structure and use their local knowledge very effectively to control the local population. So I think I would say that this is probably the most uh, seen from a local level the state that Afghanistan has ever had, which has had the highest degree of penetration at the local level.